he's young, gay, British and the rock star of America's alternative right. I think Milo says the things that need to be said in a style that um, nobody on the left these days wants to hear. He's like so charismatic and the way that he does, the way that he presents his views. Is the election rigged? Well, I'm afraid to tell you that it is. Milo Yiannopoulos speaks to sell-out crowds and draws thousands of viewers to his live-streamed events. Well, this is all bullshit. The 33-year-old works for the American news website Breitbart, an outlet that's challenging traditional right-wing media operations like Fox News. From now until November 8th, the media will be too busy trying to manufacture scandals about Donald Trump. Hey, Hi! Good! Nice to meet you. Welcome, nice to welcome. meet you. Thanks for having us. Well, thank you for coming. Shall I show you around? The alt-right is youthful and vibrant and mischievous. It takes full advantage of, you know, the crazy world of social media. And it rejects this idea. Journalists are always painting social media as, you know, being full of abuse and harassment. Well, they don't see it like that. They see it more as sort of ridicule and mischief. Several of his events around the country have been cancelled because of security risks. He's been banned from Twitter for saying a black female actress looks like a man. He says feminism is cancer and believes transgender people suffer from a mental illness. The alt-right's favourite son is unapologetic. I like, prefer to think of myself as a, as a truth teller. I prefer to think of myself as somebody who will go there and say what other people are thinking um, when nobody else will. And some people are going to you know, cry foul and pretend to be offended and all the rest of it, but that's because we, we now live in a society where grievance and victimhood and, and um, you know, being offended has been elevated into a sort of currency, like it actually means something, like it's worth something. Well, it's not. Hillary Clinton's labelled the alt-right as a hateful movement, being fuelled by her opponent, Donald Trump, who hired Breitbart boss Steve Bannon to manage his campaign earlier this year. This is someone who retweets white supremacists online, like the user who goes by the name White Genocide TM. Trump took this fringe bigot with a few dozen followers and spread his message to 11 million people. So the de facto merger between Breitbart and the Trump campaign represents a landmark achievement for this group, a fringe element that has effectively taken over the Republican Party. The political coalition among the right is just completely scrambled by this because they're being attacked so sort of from within, you know, people that were always on the fringe of the right, um, but sort of would fall in line politically when, you know, it came to elections. And this year they're saying no, and they're throwing up all these roadblocks, and, and the fact that they even got Donald Trump, you know, elected uh, uh, in the primary um, is, is proof that they're, they're having a disproportionate impact. The alt-right is also challenging traditional conservative media outlets. Donald Trump has encouraged people to turn away from the mainstream media and go online, where operations like Breitbart are thriving. It has certainly had an impact on legitimate journals of opinion on the right, like National Review and the Weekly Standard, uh, where I work. Um, and uh, I am, you know, sort of nervous about this because one of the things about the conservative movement that sort of united it and held it together was that they prided themselves on having a very sort of clear set of intellectual principles. And the alt-right, I don't think quite, as I, like I pointed out, is they're just reactionary. They haven't really articulated a coherent set of beliefs that I think would have a, a, a good effect of uniting people over the long term. <laughs> right have been very good at using the internet to get their message out there, which means they can publish and broadcast from just about anywhere. You're listening to The Daily Traditionalist with Matthew Highmark at RadioArea.com. Uh, glad to be here live with you today on Thursday. We're almost through the weeks. So From rural southern Indiana, white nationalist leader Matthew Heimbach hosts a live daily podcast. The founder of the Traditionalist Workers' Party says his audience numbers in the tens of thousands. You know, I'm a white nationalist. I care about my people, uh, bonded together by blood, culture and heritage, and shared destiny.
support nationalism. They support the idea of faith and family. And Guys like Milo, you know, he's not white. Um, he doesn't share our values. He's an open homosexual. Uh, I respect what he is doing in terms of attacking political correctness, especially on college campuses. That's great. But he's not a part of our movement. They still need clean water. They still need, he's uh, only 25 years old, but has been labelled the next so David Duke, now. the former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. He's been called a fascist and the new face of racism in America. I think that every group of people should advocate for their heritage, for their culture, and for their future. Uh, you know, so what's being called racist is self-preservation. It's about loving your own people and your own culture. Donald Trump is popular out here. His America First message resonates where many in the white working class see a bleak future for them and their children. The minorities, the, the elites are all, you know, and you see that with like the anti-Trump stuff, like look at these, look at these pathetic unemployed white trash, you know, well if, if a Mexican's going to steal your job, you must really suck at, at doing jobs. And it's just constant humiliation, humiliation, humiliation. So I guess we're going to, we'll go up and then we'll hit the next couple blocks. We've... The political party Matthew Heimbach founded currently boasts only 500 members. But in 2018, he wants to be fielding candidates in local and state races. So we support investment in our infrastructure, also stopping the forced refugee resettlement within our communities, because we need to keep our families safe. You know, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, and the idea of bringing people in that could be ISIS affiliates, could be dangerous for our community. The white nationalist movement in America is disparate, but Matthew Heimbach is embarking on something that hasn't been done before, an effort to bring together all nationalist groups to form a united political front. There's already hundreds of thousands of active white nationalists, members of the alt-right in the United States, millions of people who agree with us, as we've seen with the, uh, you know, the vote for Donald Trump. So what we're going to have to do, unite those people, organise those people, and then mobilise those people. The results... At 70 years old, it's doubtful Donald Trump would launch another bid for the White House if this one fails. But many on the left and the right are worried he's unleashed something dangerous. I suspect there's a really good chance that uh, Donald Trump will become the Iraq war of this decade, which is to say that two or three years from now, a great many people who supported it will have you know, no recollection of having done that. Um, and if that's the case, the alt-right could prove to be um, um, insignificant, but we really just don't know. It doesn't really matter whether Trump wins or loses because this movement isn't going anywhere. And with Hillary Clinton in the White House, they're only going to get more vocal and more angry. They're only going to get more irritated. <laughs>